नमस्ते नरसिंहाय शरणम प्रपदे तव कर कमल वरे नद्भुत शिंगा दलिताईरण्यकशिपूर तनुविंग जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे जय जगदीश हरे
So today is 15th, yeah, 15th of July 2022, and this is, uh, we, we, I'm Hanumat Prashak Swami, <laughs> I'm 
Nice to meet you. Yeah. And uh, we've been doing a, a, a series for four lectures and the presentations. This is the last one <clears throat> on this book we published, Taba Pache Pache. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's described as after, afterwards, words that go after, the nectar of instruction by Srila Prabhupada, right there, which is, of course, a uh, commentary on Rupa Goswami's uh, Upadeshamrita, Upadeshamrita. And we were mentioning in the, from the very beginning that, you know, Srila Prabhupada, he, he based this movement on books, on books, yeah. He says one time, this is every science has their books, you know, chemistry, physics, botany, sociology. They all have their books. So how, how can we say then that religion has no books? Yeah, yeah. Very, very substantial literature. If you really become serious about religion, you're going to find very, very substantial, organized system of literature to explain it. Yeah. And so our tradition, Bengali Vaishnavism, Chaitanya Vaishnavism, very, very systematic, very profound. You know, maybe, maybe even the best in the world right now. Yes, sir. Yeah. So Prabhupada gave us at the heart of everything, Srimad Bhagavatam, out of all the Vedic literatures, all the Puranas, the Itihasas, Mahabharata, the Vedas, the Upanishads, so many things. Srimad Bhagavatam, according to so many resources, not just ourself, is that the real heart, the essence, the ripened, the, the, uh, the ripened fruit yeah, of the tree of Vedic literature. Yeah, the best, the best and the m most mature. Yeah. So, so Chaitanya Charitamrita, which Srila Prabhupada also gave us, is in a, a class for studying Srimad Bhagavatam. And Nectar of Devotion uh, by Rupa Goswami, Bhakti Rasamita Sindhu, is a complete science of devotion. Okay, here comes the Shakti Mala. Shishindatai Goranga Kidai. Okay. <laughs> He's covering our microphone. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can say something intelligent now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the Nectar of Devotion, you know, Prabhupada translated that. It, it's, it's, it's by the same author, Rupa Goswami, Bhakti Ras Amrita Sindhu, and it's considered his uh, opus magnus, his greatest work, and fantastic s summary of all the knowledge, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and it, it culminates in this beautiful relationship in Vrindavan, Krishna and the gopis, then he wrote another book called Ujwala Nilamani, which is then carrying on this beautiful explanation of the, the gopis' relationships with Krishna, the transcendental spiritual world, like that. So we have, we have wonderful literature, but, but in here, in the, in the Upadesha Amrita, Prabhupada starts in his preface. And of course, preface is very, very important. If it's written properly, it's very essential for understanding um, you know, some work. The preface tells you wh what are the qualifications of the author? What are the qualifications expected from the reader? Okay. What is the purpose of the book? What's it trying to accomplish? And, and, and the circumstances under which it was written. You know, I always remember, remember the story uh, that World War II, you know, World War II, the, the Third Reich, Hitler, had conquered you know, all of Europe, practically speaking. And the only thing standing against them was, was Britain. And the United States was not entering the war. So here, England was standing against this entire empire by itself. And the only thing they had in the end was, the, was their air force, you know, which was, was struggling also. And in the end, the only thing which gave them an edge, really, uh, was radar. <laughs> Because then they could tell, you know, uh, when the German bombers were coming, where they were coming, so they could concentrate whatever force they had. So one engineer, of course, was in charge of setting up this very 
you know, in the beginning, radar in the very beginning, very simple. There were no like dishes turning or anything else. It was just fixed systems, but it, it was working. So people were criticizing the product, saying what he did was third class. And he said, look, if, if second class is going to be too late, and first, cla first, class, first class may never come at all, third class is good enough. <laughs> so this is my only hope that we're here giving you a third class presentation. Yeah, but maybe it has something to contribute. You know, that Krishna can make it worthwhile. Yeah. So Upadesha Amrita is, is very nice. It's a summary of the uh, introduction of everything in 11 verses, 11 verses. Rupa Goswami covers everything. It's like the summary. Uh, nectar of devotion, Bhakti Raja Medicindu is like the complete science. And then Vidagda Madhava and Lalita Madhava. Yeah, these are two dramas by Rupa Goswami where he shows, he shows how it works. Summary, complete science and a demonstration. So if you can actually follow Vidagda Madhava and Lalita Madhava, they're full of like very, very funny things and always sadness and everything else put together in such a very, very, very beautiful way. And so you get an idea about what the spiritual world is like. Mark Twain, our famous American philosopher, humorist, he said that most religions, they say when you go to heaven, you don't do anything but kind of sit there and play on a, play on a violin. <laughs> and there's no sex. You know? And he said in the material world, people will sac sacrifice their wealth, their health, their reputation, everything for sexual relations, you know. And so you tell them there's no, no sex in heaven. And he said maybe one person in 20 can even get any decent kind of sound out of a musical instrument here. You tell them all they're gonna do is play musical instruments, you know. So he said when, when preachers, preachers present this kind of propaganda about the spiritual world, it makes the devil, devil's work very easy. <laughs> makes the devil's work very easy. Like that, but no, we're presenting something very different. You know, Nilamadava and Radharani, so beautiful every day and different. It's just you can see something so nice when you go out and turn left and go past. You know, what is it, Colonel Chicken and, <laughs> and Ronald McDonald over the street here? It's terrible. It's terrible. All these old old shops and everything is this terrible colors and smoke. It's horrible. But as soon as you come in here, everything is beautiful and bright. You know? and has significance. <clears throat> so, Upadesha Amrita gives us a summary of everything in 11 verses, you know, and it's a good basis. It's like when you're making a house, you make the foundation, you put in some columns, okay. Then basically the house, the house is okay. Roof, foundation, okay. Then everything else hangs on that. So the entire Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the entire Srimad Bhagavatam, all of the whole spiritual world, can basically be divided into 11, <laughs> 11 verses. So the last few lectures, we've been talking about a summary, you know, of Upadesha Mrita. Uh, he starts off with control your senses, engage them in the service of Krishna, okay? And he gives you uh, six things that'll make it difficult to do that, and six things that'll make it easy, okay? Then he goes back to the basic principle, which is association, you know? I've, 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 I've made it to this day without being destroyed by the witch, <laughs> the black witch. There's a, there's a white witch and a black witch. <laughs> the, the black witch is out to give us, Durga, out to get us every day. You no, know? she's after us so many ways. You know? yeah. And so, so many challenges today and so many reasons to become angry at people and you know, all, so many things like that. You know? and so yeah, association with devotees again and again and again and people, I got a package today from Chaitanya Charitamrita Mother Shubra. <laughs> and guess what was in the package? <laughs> oatmeal, oatmeal cookies. Chaitanya Charitamrita Kita. Yeah. And also some mangoes. There's some mangoes. Yeah. So it, it helped me. And then coming here to have association with nice devotees like that, okay, this made it through one more day. Yeah. And Prabhupada's saying every day is battle. But the thing is, every time we do it, we don't have to do it again. Uh, it's an eternal, eternal battle. When you come to devotional service, maybe you come to the Hare Krishna movement, okay, yeah? 
And, oh, yeah, I know that. I know, yeah, we're not the body, Bhagavad Gita. I understand that. Oh, karma, I understand that. Okay, devotional service, yeah, I've got to chant my rounds. Okay. Adoshvata, sadhu sangha, bhajana kriya, anarta nivritti, anarta... <laughs> yeah, yeah, previous lifetime, no? You did it all, right? And now you're here you are again. <laughs> but then you come to some point, and, oh, that's, that's hard, you know? Well, now you've got to start paying. You've got to work. But, Nihabi Kramonashusti, whatever work you do, that's it. That's yours eternally, eternally. You know? So every day, every, every minute when we make some progress like that, right now, you know, then that's eternal, eternal. So many things. So the song we sang in the beginning uh, by Naratam Das Thakur, it's a very summary, also summary of all of our culture, all of our philosophy. You know? And he goes through all these levels like that. So last time we discussed text number, uh, we could go through the book, but basically Tabapachi Pachi, it's, a, it's going through verse by verse and giving you know, depth and perspective on all the content like that. You know? In the appendices, we have very nice things. We, have, uh, we take all the verses that are quoted in the purports or even paraphrased and give them, you know, find the sources like that. Because this is a fantastic you know, Vaishnava verse book. You want to understand all of Prabhupada's books, what are the essential verses? They're cited here, so many. Maybe not so many. You know? So that we have that in here, all the verses and their, and their connections, and it makes, should be published as a separate little thing, so we can refresh these. You know? This is the difference between a Madhyama Adhikari and Uttama Adhikari, one of them, is that Madhyama Adhikari understands the philosophies pretty well, engaged in devotional service, but they haven't got the solid basis of scriptural resources. Prabhupada says, this is not ink on paper. This is directly Krishna. Yeah. And so scriptural resources and developing our personal relationship with them, yeah, refining them, as sorting them out, that, that's our spiritual life. It's our spiritual life. Yeah. And so when, when we can find these things and have them built up, then we have very, very solid structure. Maya attacks us, are you sure? Maybe it's not like that. Maybe it's like this. Maybe you thought that, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, then we have these scriptural resources which are approved by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and by Naratam Das Thakur, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, wow, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so understanding these you know, scriptural resources and developing our whole structure is essential. And we have some help here. If you want to use this, nice selection of verses that are used and to substantiate Upadesha Amrita. Yeah. And what else? That's the other things here too, very nice things. We, we, we covered another, another lecture, the appendices. Then we picked out two verses finally for our last two lectures. And the one last week was Dikshasti Chait Pranatabis, Chabajitam Isham, Shushushraya Bhajana Vignam Ananya, Ananya Sunyahuridim Ipsita San Melabdya. And that describes the different levels of devotees. How many levels of devotees are there? Three. What, 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 what are they in Sanskrit? Kanista, Kanista Adhikari, which in English is lower, middle, and upper. <laughs> yeah, very nice, but it's very practical. Even just a little bit of information like that, you know, yeah, yeah. A little bit of information, okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so Rupa Goswami in that verse is describing us how to distinguish different levels of devotees, you know, because somebody externally may be in a, very advanced position according to this and that. But what is her spiritual level? What is her spiritual advancement? You know? yeah. Is that my phone? Not my phone. <laughs> Not mine. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Okay, yeah. So what is their level of spiritual advancement? One time we were in Berkeley, California and we were walking down the street there and we saw three boys and I think high school had just finished so they were kind of like just hanging out enjoying themselves you know and one devotee started to to preach to them 
trying to sell them a book. And they were friends, you know. But when they came in contact with the absolute truth, which they'd never been in contact with before, it was amazing. One of them was really angry, you know, don't bother us, leave us alone, we don't care about these things. The other guy was really attracted. What is this? Where are you from, India? And the third guy was just kind of neutral. And it shocked them. You could see, wow, we thought we were all like friends, same high school together our whole lives. Yeah. But what, what, what happened, though, was they all were realizing that spiritually, we're all quite on a different level. Yeah. And that's a very substantial relationship when you start to develop spiritual relationships with people. Yeah. Uh, Buddhist phrase again, when, you meet, when two thieves meet upon the road, they need no introduction. They know each other by sight. So, so many times I've gone out to, well, I mean, so many times, I've told some other stories before, but one time I remember I was walking around San Francisco and there was a funeral parlor and people were loading the, the corpse <laughs> into the car and maybe going to go off for the funeral. And so people were standing in front of the uh, place talking, relatives, relatives or something. But I was walking by, I looked at one of them, and as soon as I, I looked at him, he looked back at me, and, and I could tell that he was spiritually advanced enough so he actually understood what religion was about. And he was smoking, and he really put the cigarette behind his back, back like that, and kind of waved, you know. So yeah, when we have spiritual realization, we'll recognize people in other religions who are also madhya madhikaris. They've, they've, they've taken the commitment to their leader, their acharya, their prophet, their, you know, was it, uh, was it Jesus is the, uh, what is he in Christianity? Muhammad's the prophet. Jiva, Jesus is, I forget what it is, we'll come back. But anyway, yeah, he's the, the guru. And they take, they take a commitment to his responsibility, his baptism, you know, and then they're actually following the process. And these are very unusual people, very rare, very rare. And then we can relate to them. They're people on the path like me and stuff and you know, we can help each other from different angles like that then someone Uttama Adhikari which you investigate very thoroughly so the prophet is presenting himself he's sitting up on a big seat there and everything else here I am I'm representing my spiritual master properly and so you investigate me I'm right out here so everybody can look at me and, you, and one way to do it of course is to read his books thoroughly scrutinizingly Reading Upadesha Rita, I began to realize there's no, there's no breaks. You know? There's no like holes in it. It's just a continuous, pure, intense spiritual awareness. You read something, okay, but after you go on reading for four or five years, when you come back again, you realize, wow, he's talking about this. Uh, and now he's giving this relationship to it. And you go on again, you're expecting, wow, it's going to be even deeper. And so many people commenting this, these books are for, for reading, for, for remembering, for contemplation, and finally for your windows like that, you know, transportation. So we did that. We did, last week we discussed text number uh, five, five, yeah, which is about these different levels of devotees and how to relate to them. So many lessons there make our spiritual life so, so fixed. So text seven and eight, Rupa Goswami goes back to the process, you yeah? know, back to the process. From association, he goes back to the process. You know. So both texts are very similar. Tanama rupa charitade sukhitana nusmrityo. That's today. Yeah. Seven was shatnama krishna charitade sukhitana nusmrityo. No, no. Shatnama krishna. No, no. Was it tanama rupa charitade? I can look it up. <laughs> shatnama krishna charitade sita piya vidya. Sitapiya vidya, patopatapya. Yeah. So there he says, nama, rupa, <laughs> guna or charit, yeah. sangha, and lila. And this is the process, another way of looking at it. Everything begins with a holy name. In the, in the Christian tradition, it says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What does hallowed mean? Huh? Yeah, there's a very, very famous American holiday called Halloween. <laughs> what does that mean? It means hallowed evening. Yeah, these things have Christian spiritual basis, hallowed evening. Because the next day is All Saints Day. And in Mexico and places like that, they have very big festivals. And basically it's Pitri Puja. 
all the ancestors are worshiped, given respect, and, and giving you know, energy to them. So the night before is called All Hallows Evening. Yeah. So right in the beginning, Christian tradition is glorifying the name of God, name of God. Some people realizing the potency, especially in this Kali Yuga. So for chanting, Krishna, 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 Barack Obama, Barack Obama, <laughs> Putin, Putin. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Krishna. Yeah, then as you become purified by saying it, saying it, other thoughts can enter in, thoughts that come in are be connecting, connected to Krishna, Krishna. Yeah. Then you become a little purified, your intelligence becomes a little purified, and what do you want? You want to see the Nama Rupa. Yeah, what where's, where's a picture? <laughs> Chanting my rounds, you want to sit in, in front of the deities, you want to have a picture of Krishna or see something that reminds you of Krishna. Yeah. So it's a very, very natural development. You can see how you're developing your spiritual life. It's Nama, here he says Nama, Rupa, Charit, qualities, character, character, Charit, and then Guna, or Guna, the same thing, qualities. So you're coming, you want to see Nilamadava and Radha, you know. I, I, I haven't been to India for what, two or three years now, two years. And so hopefully we're going to go see Radha Nilamadava, see Radha, Radha Madhava in Mayapur. And I know when I go there, it's like, I'm, hi, I've, I'm reporting. <laughs> It's been two years I've been out and, you know, remember me. Yeah, we remember you. <laughs> yeah. uh, and you feel like you've, you've come home and come to the spiritual world when you go to Vrindavan or, you know, what do you call it? Uh, <laughs> Nabadweep. Yeah. So Nama, Rupa, Charit. And when we're doing things wrong, the Charit's also there. Krishna is not pleased with us, <laughs> you know, looking at you. Yeah. It expands. Nama, Rupa, Charit. Yeah. Sangha, sangha, Sangha. Then you become conscious. Prabhupada says Krishna is never alone. He says Krishna is at least with a cow. At least there's a cow there. He says <laughs> you see that in the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And so then we, we, once you have associates, you have lila, pastimes. Yeah. And with so many people, everybody wants pastimes. Everybody wants to read books. Everybody wants. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says everybody loves a new book. Yeah. You get a you get a new book by a good author, and okay, you want to go hide yourself someplace with a box of chocolates or something, you know. Well, I'm alone all weekend, I can just, ah, my mind can go someplace else, yeah. So that's it, Nama, Rupa, Chari, yeah. Sangha, Lila. That's it, that's, that's, that's everything. So if we're chanting Japa, chanting Kirtan, we should see it expanding like that, you know, more and more. You know? So text seven and eight, he talks about it. Seven, seven, he talks about it in terms of getting free from material attachment and, become, and, and have, putting an end to all these, these problems, becoming attached to Krishna. One, Indi, it was India West. It was a big Indian newspaper. I guess it's still going on. The person wrote a very, very nice article talking about, he says, if, if, we, if we go to the temple, he said, and we have to give $20 a donation. <laughs> we feel it is horrible. <laughs> I had to give $20. Okay, $50. Okay. But he said, we can go to the wall, with, go to the, to the uh, mall with our children and spend $500 for toys <laughs> and everything else. and No problem. Yeah, yeah. And if we have to go to the temple and listen to Bhagavad Gita for 20 minutes, we think, oh, it is horrible. <laughs> yeah. But we can listen to, you know, the test match of Krishna was India versus Pakistan <laughs> Thirty hours like that. He gave very, it was very nice. He gave very, very nice, you know, contrast. So Sarupa Goswami is saying: in the beginning, we have a taste for all this material gratification, material things. Oh, first a little bit of uh, coffee, well, more mocha coffee, and, then, and some donuts, and this, and then that, and you know, putting it all together. You know, poetical, poetical this gratification, the senses, the music of the senses. But he's saying if we take this chanting process systematically, as given by an acharya, and how does Prabhupada give it to us? How should we chant? Well, as much as possible, but we have to chant the holy names. How? Huh? Yes. And that's all? My goodness, I initiated this guy. <laughs> We have to chant 16 rounds on beads, remember. <laughs> yeah, it gives us very specific way to chant. 
You have to get up in the morning and chant. To chant in the evening, you know. You look at it, there's more and more details. Very systematic process of how to chant. You know? Yes, whenever you chant, it'll have a result. It's like eating. Whatever you eat, there'll be a result. But if you eat properly, there'll be a better result, you know, better, faster. You know? Okay. So Prabhupada's saying here, if we chant according to an acharya, our, our material disease will be destroyed at the root, you know, and then we'll actually start to develop a taste. So that's number seven. So today we're looking at eight, you know, and then he says, you can all chant together if you want to, but I can see this here. Tana, text number eight, if you got the books or you haven't got them, okay, then repeat after me. Tanamarupa. Tanamarupa. Charitadi. Sukirtananu. There's a guy. Shushushraya. I can't even read it more. My eyes are going. In the last two weeks, my eyes have really been going out. Anyway, Tanama Rupa Chari Tari Sukhatana Nusmacho Kramina Rasana Manasi Nyo Jan Tishtan Braje Tanana Ragi Janana Gami Kalad Nayam Apaya Kalad Kailam Nayar Akalim Yeti Upadesh Shara. Okay. The time of death is some hope. Yeah. Okay. Translation? You read that? So, by following the process, we get free from material attachment, we become attached to Krishna. And it goes in phases. In the morning, we may be more pure devotees than we are in the evening, you know, in different days and so on. We're, you know, going up. It's a spiral, you know. Uh, but, but, but he's recommending here that this is the essence of all advice, okay? So, so Upadesha Amrita is the essence of all advice. And text number eight is the essence of the essence of all advice. Very, very nice process. And now we have the advantage of hearing what it is. Okay. He's recommending 24 hours a day to be hearing and chanting about Krishna. Yeah. Of course, this can, Krishna's service. You can be talking about buying things for the deity, you know, fixing the deity's temple, you know, going out and raising, taking, collecting money for your, for your family to teach them to become devotees, right? To have deity worship in your house, you know? Very essential to deity, you know. Prabhupada says, grihasta, fam family members who don't worship the deities according to their means are 100% guaranteed to fall down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so very essential, this process. Coming to this process, what it means, chanting, kirtan, then engaging in deity worship. And everything can be focused on the deities, you know. You know? And of course, we have our community deities like that. You know? So, if we're, if we're doing this, this process, according to him, we find a way 24 hours a day. For example, our program, if we can follow it, before Mangal Arctic, we read like Chaitanya Charitamrita and all these esoteric things. Right after Mangal Arctic, we carry Kirtan chanting, then we read Nectar of Devotion in Spanish with the devotees. You know? Then of course we have Japa, then we have you know, a, a class, you know, hearing and chanting. And during, during breakfast, many times, many temples will read the Krishna book. You know. So this way, Prabhupada says, until 10 o'clock in the morning, a very strong program. Then after that, if you're sannyasi or Brahmin, okay, yeah, then you can go on. You know, organizing different kinds of preaching programs, different areas where you're specifically hearing and chanting. And so 24 hours a day, hearing and chanting, hearing and chanting. And again, you can relate your karma yoga to it. If you're you know, making money for Krishna, all, all, the, all the talk you're doing to make the money is also talking about Krishna, also talking about Krishna. Yeah. Then, then, he says, gradually engage the tongue and the mind, okay, yeah. And in this way, what's next? Goranga, bolite, habe, then the dham will appear. Then we'll start residing in Vrindavan. Our bubble will expand so that when we're going to work, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was going to work as a judge, and he was thinking, oh, now I'm taking care of the, uh, Krishna's calves. 
some, some widow was coming into his court hoping for some mercy because all of her husband's you know, so-called family members are taking the house and everything else and leaving her with the kids to take care of with no resources, you know, nobody p- p- to protect her. So he was thinking, oh, this is like a poor calf, some poor calf in Vrindavan, and nobody's protecting her, and I will be a cowherd boy, and I will protect her. And it's, it's, it's not like an imposition. Everything in this world is a projection of Goloka. It is a projection. Every time I would come over the Bay Bridge from Oakland to San Francisco at night in the evening, you see all the, the, the buildings on the island of San Francisco. It looks just like Dwarka. All these skyscraper buildings in different colors. And so one packed up area, very nice, with, rich with culture and activities and so on. Yeah. So everything here is a projection. We become more purified than we can realize it and start to do something practical. You know? So this is what he's recommending. Engage the tongue, engage the mind. Yeah, you're liberated. But now start to associate with these Brajabhasis. Yeah, read the Krishna book. Why? Because it's interesting. <laughs> because it uh, takes my mind off of crazy things. But you start to read it, and now the pastimes start to become real. Right? One time Jayananda told us, the Prabhupada said, um, if you go on chanting Hare Krishna, you will start to see pastimes that you never read in any of my books. Like that. Yes. Yeah. Another devotee said, one time Prabhupada was in Los Angeles, and Los Angeles and New York used to do dramas, a lot of dramas, very well. So one time they were doing the kidnapping of Rukmini, the kidnapping of Rukmini. And they were following the story like that, and you know she came out of the palace to see the goddess Durga before her marriage, and all the princes fell off their horses when they saw her because she was so beautiful, <laughs> like that. And, oh, yeah. and then Krishna came out and just kidnapped her and took her on his chariot. And he said, Prabhupada was watching it with very like enthusiastic and the actors were becoming so motivated in, in their roles. This is Raganuga. That's what he's describing next. You start doing these dramas with Prabhupada and he's just encouraging you and everything else and you start to see the pastimes. They start to become manifest. So at that point, when Krishna took her on the chariot, Prabhupada just stood up and said, and she, she wasn't a timid girl. She was Kshatriya. <laughs> she was a daughter of a, of a king, you know. So she, Krishna's there with her thing, she, she took, took the reins from him like that and started driving, driving the chariot. You can imagine this, her, her driving the chariot to escape from all these unwanted suitors and Krishna shooting at them, right? Yeah, yeah. To show him, okay, this is the kind of girl you're getting. You know, I'm, you know, like that. And it's not at all in the Krishna book. Nothing, is, nothing, nothing about that in the Krishna book. But the Prabhupada was describing it with such like vivid character, everything else, and, and Krishna, okay, now her, Krishna could shoot at these guys and she would drive the chariot and get it out of there and stuff, you know. And so this is what happens, right? It becomes manifest. We're reading the Krishna book and we start to see what it's talking about and, and the things we didn't notice before start to stand out. Ah, yes, that's, that's what, yeah, yes, yeah. So this is Raga Nuga Bhakti, Adoshwada. Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartha Nivriti, Nishta, Ruchi. Yeah. Now you're starting to get a taste in your devotional service. Yeah. Yeah. You're starting to relish Ram Leela more than Krishna Leela or, or, your, or your deities. I'm, I've, been, I've been associating with Lord Nishingade for a long time and so on. Yeah, he's, but he, he, he likes to hear the Krishna book. <laughs> Yeah, so you start to put together these spiritual tastes and ideas, and yeah, from the very beginning we can do some of this. Yeah, but as we become purified, it becomes the real content. If somebody comes to this level of adoshvada for a little preliminary faith, okay, and then associating with the devotees, getting initiated, you know, and following the process, becoming very fixed in the process, you know, then ruchi, okay, that that level. You're doing the same thing everybody else is doing, right? It's not just, oh, now they're doing this, now they're doing that. No, but now it's how you do it, you know? I remember one Pujari, who's a lady in Miami, or she remember, I don't know who she was, anything, but she was doing the Gore Arctic. It was just like, you know, she was in a different world, you know? It was no, no bodily concept of life in this, and well, a lot of, no bodily concept of life and everything else, wow. So you begin to appreciate, okay, they're, they're doing the same thing as everybody else, but how are they doing it? Yeah. 
So in Raganuga, what she's describing here, and and in the beginning of the verse, we have we have you know we go through and give some I think some nice considerations, nice nice perspectives on it, like we're doing now. And it's how to control the mind. You know, everybody wants to control the mind. The Buddhists are offering so many mind control things. So many groups are showing, oh, we can help you control the mind. This and this and this and that. And some even Christianity, okay, they have some nice goal. Some yogas have some nice goal. Some yogas have very, very weird goals. And if you control the mind, you will become one with everything. <laughs> okay, you will become God. Okay, yes, yes. My guru, he has become perfect. And now he is his Baba Ramdas. My guru has achieved that perfection. And now he is having sex with every part of the universe at every moment. Wow. Okay, <laughs> when did your classes start? Yeah. He's having sex with the microphone. He's having sex with his nose. He's having sex with light bulbs. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they, everybody's with any brains is talking about mind control, mind control. Some very very gross fools who who believe in Budweiser beer are saying you don't need mind control. Just let the beer control your mind. <laughs> you know. Why ask why? That's one of their motto, one of their mantras. Why ask why? Another, have another beer and you won't have any problem with your mind. Yeah, 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 common, you know. Yeah. And so, so he's recommending, Tanama Rupa Charitati, that we control the mind and probably gives very nice elucidation on what this means, very practical. Then after that, when you've got your mind control, when you're, you can start to actually experience Vrindavan, experience the temple, experience that Radha Nila Madhava are not statues, you know, and that they're people and they have different humors and feelings and stuff. You know, you know. Then he says, okay, then, then you're ready to live in Vrindavan. You know. When should I move into the temple? It's the same thing. If you actually move into the temple and living here, going, living in Krishna house, you have to be a certain level of purification. You can stay for a weekend, you can do things like that, but you realize that to live there constantly requires a level, you know. It's like to go on the altar, right? You have to have a certain level of mind control. I know how many pujaris, if, when you're off the altar, you can think bad thoughts about people and enjoy, enjoy your mind complaining about people, this and that. But my experience is, when you go on the altar, Krishna doesn't allow it. <laughs> you know, immediately you'll smash your ankle into the... the the marble thing, or you stick a pin through your finger or something. I mean, nope. When you're on this altar with me, you have to you know, control your mind. You can't think bad about people. Yeah, yeah. And so, so I remember when Pujari work, the curtains closed after Mangalartik, and all the Pujaris go on, and you have to take off the deities, all the night dress, and move things out of the way, and do the puja, and bathe them, and everything else. And you've got to put clothes back on, you've got to pin them up, you've got to do everything. So basically, from about five o'clock until seven o'clock. You get two hours to do all this. And you start pinning up the deities and everything else, and you realize this is just terrible. I got to, you keep looking at the clock continuously. And so when the pujari goes on to make the offering at like 6.45 in the morning something, all the other Sringaris who are addressing the deities, they all come off and you hear everybody going, <gasps> <laughs> and it's like you haven't breathed you know, for two hours and stuff. It's such an intense program. But after that, when you come off and you know, maybe Shringar, Teak, and the Kirtan's going on, your, my mind is so stimulated, your visual cortex is so stimulated, you see visual forms and relationships everywhere. Then you can sit and chant for like continuously in front of the deities and so on. So it's scientific effect, the Nama Rupa. But to stay there, yeah. Okay, now, now if you stay on the altar 24 hours a day, that's Vrindavan. Yeah. yeah there's no, in Vrindavan Dham, when you go there, he's recommending south of Delhi, you're not in any, any longer in the material world. You know? And you have to be able to control your mind and all these things. And Prabhupada says, go for some time, control it as long as you can, then get out and go back to your you know, level of mixed devotion. And, but, but, but it's there to teach us, to teach us you know, how we can stay in Vrindavan 24 hours a day. You know? And the, the trick, uh, Anuragi, right? Staying under the shelter of devotees. You know, you know. This is Raganuga Bhakti. You know, again, we give the example that by yourself, maybe you come to the point where you can play some, play Beethoven or something. You know, you know, the, know, the, key, you know the, the notes and you can play them. But it's like you're kind of stumbling through and there's no, not like somebody else playing it so well. 
So your violin teacher comes, and he, sorry, your music teacher comes, and piano teacher, and he says, okay, look, I'll, I'll play the violin, you know? And, and you, you play the piano. So with him, you can, you can get into it and stuff, and wow, this is nice, yeah, this is, now I know why people like Beethoven, yeah, yeah. So this is Raga Nuga, right, yeah. We can follow the Raga, Anuga, right, yeah. When somebody is there who has that Raga, we get their association. So getting association is a whole science too. He's already discussed that. And four is how to associate. Five is how to associate with Majamadakaris. And six is how to associate with Uttamadakari, like that. And so that's basically the whole process. And if you do this, then Bhakti Siddhanta gives these levels, vasanas, and they are, Prabhupada gives a kind of quick summary. I think there are many, I forget where it is. Like, and here we have the reference. I think it's maybe Naman Chintamani by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, but it's here, yeah. And he goes to, the, what's it, there's Shravana Desha, Shravana Desha in the beginning, which is the process like we're doing right now, you were hearing. I always give, a, I give an example in here, remember, I hope it's appropriate. We knew one, one uh, devotee, his name was Bill, he was an alcoholic, <laughs> Bill W. And he was living near the Dallas Temple, actually, you know. And he said he was, anyway, you see, he would, have, he, would, he would get jobs, like, you know, when you would, when he used to have the Thunderdome or these places, they assemble stuff, you know, for different shows. So he had, he had kind of on this list of people for doing part-time assembly work and, and stuff like that. So he was making some money, surviving, finding some cheap place to live. But really he had a club he would go to and, you know, hang out there and stuff and be drinking. And, and during the week, basically, he said he was living on beer and pretzels. You can actually have a doctor here. How, how long can you survive on beer and pretzels? I think quite some time, actually, because there's a lot of people when doctors, you know, it'd be a long time before you die, you know, yeah. But that was it. He was like, basically, you get free bar snacks and some beer and stuff, you know. Then every Sunday, he would go to the temple in Dallas. Maybe you already know him. And, uh, you know, but he felt guilty about going just to eat. So he'd come before, you know, in time for the, the kirtan, the lecture, you know, you know. And then he'd take prasadam. He'd say, maybe eat three plates, and you know, at the time, and just, that, was, that was how he was surviving, you know. Yeah. And so anyway, I think he said it was one year, right? How, how many weeks is that? How many Sunday feasts is that? Okay, <laughs> it was leap year, <laughs> it was two and a half. He attended 52 kirtans and 52 lectures, and finally his mind said, Bill. <laughs> yeah, what is it? Yeah. What are, they, what are they talking about, Bill? <laughs> so he said for the first time, he actually was able to and tried and try to understand what the lecture was about. Right? Shravana Desha, somehow or other you're hearing. Then the next one is, I forgot, Varna Desha, acceptance. You take a dry sponge and put it in water, what happens? Nothing. <laughs> Pull it out. Okay. So, he was, but you hold it there, which is recommended by Kapila, they hold it there, then what happens? Everybody notice? One little part will start to, it'll penetrate maybe in one little part, another little part, then those, once it gets inside, it'll just start to go like that. But someplace here, someplace there, someplace there, it'll start to penetrate. Yeah. So that's it, stay in the process, Alcoholics Anonymous, keep coming back, it works, it works, keep coming back, it works. Yeah. And at some point, something will go, aha, oh, hmm. <laughs> it's that moment when it starts to penetrate. Yeah. And many people have this experience, they one piece here, one piece there, okay, and then they start to connect up. You know? And so your whole body then becomes absorbed with this, you know, this fluid. You know? So that was for him. He finally, after he was acquiring pious activity, Shrimbatam Swakata Krishna. Die, Bhakti Bhai Bhava. Shrimbatam Swakata Krishna, Punya Shravana Kirtana, Hridayanta Stohya Bhadarani, Vidunoti Suhrit Satam. For the first, second chapter, that hearing and chanting is in itself pious activity. Even if you're sleeping here, you're acquiring eternal pious credits. Just come here and sleep <laughs> like that. What to speak of understanding it or taking it in or using your intelligence? So he was going there. Why, did he, why was he going? I don't I mean, I was a go, I was a go. I got to Sukriti. He had some previous pious credits. He didn't, he felt guilty just going to eat. 
okay, I owe them something. Yeah, so something before he was, was benefiting by it, and this time he was able to sit and hear a pure devotee's kata. So he told me the first thing he realized when he actually heard the lecture after 52 weeks, he'd been attending 52 lectures and he hadn't figured this out, that Hare Krishnas were vegetarian. Right? Okay. He was eating the food and he hadn't figured out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's been no meat in the food for 52 weeks. Wow, these people are weird. <laughs> what else do they believe? Then he figured out that Hare Krishnas believed in reincarnation. Right? 52 lectures and he never figured this out. Right? 52 lectures. <laughs> that's, that's what you like. Most, peop most people are going around their whole life just, you know, Hi, how are you? How's the family? Okay, well, I don't like them. They don't like me. It's superficial like a dog. You know? Not much more intelligence. and Never know anybody. Never know anybody. Okay, so then he found out, okay, Hare Krishna's are vegetarian, and they, they believe in reincarnation. Then he, say, he said he was, wow, this, these are weird people. I'm not going to come here anymore. <laughs> I don't, I'm not going to come back. You know? Well, but food's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, well, maybe there is reincarnation. Maybe I can reincarnate as a cockroach in, my, in the bar. Then, you know, all the beer, the beer that falls down on me, you know, like, you know, maybe a whole drops of beer, you know. But that was the beginning, you know, shra, Shravana Dasha, uh, Varana Dasha. So then we start to become Krishna conscious. It starts to penetrate. If we get, if we get a formal process, and then it becomes uninterrupted. <clears throat> if, you, if you come to the point of being, taking second initiation and worshiping the deity, just by that process, you're involved, involved 24 hours a day, right? You have to wake up in the morning, take your bath, go on the altar, offer the morning offering, dress the deities, bathe the deities. And so that way, 24 hours a day, if you're following the process, there's uh, uh, engagement, engagement. They'll be doing different things. Some people sankirtan, but after a while, I, actually, I remember this. I was in the uh, Bhaktivedanta Institute offices at 84 Carl Street, <laughs> where the in Judah comes out of the tunnel. And I was standing behind the table, and nobody was there. Then I, I suddenly realized that I, that I, I was never unhappy. Right? Anybody come to that platform? You realize, you know, basically, you know, I basically was never unhappy. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because if I, something causes me distress, my intelligence is trained to, to take care of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Since a Brahmin, no, how's it go? Sun, how's it, how's it start off? Brahma Bhuta, Prasanatma, Na Sochiti, Na Kangshiti, Samasarvesha Bhuteshu, Bhaktim Lagate Param, Na Sochiti, Na Kangshiti. He's not hankering, he's not lamenting. The Brahman. And you see Pujaris, Pujaris, they're like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, things sneak through. They sneak through, but that's the point. So it becomes continuous. You know, 24 hours a day, basically you're, you're a Brahmin, you're engaged all the time. Okay, then the next step he's describing, Bhakti Siddhanta is describing is continuous and intense. Now you're starting to do all these things, you're adding things in. One, one uh, efficiency expert, he was hired by one company to teach time management to the, uh, the executives. So he came in, maybe 10, 15 executives there in a big glass bottle jar, and he filled it full of rocks. And he said, is the jar filled? And they said, well, yeah, it's full of rocks. Then he came and started shaking some grass, some, pouring some, some sand in <laughs> until the sand filled up to the top, you know, shaking. He said, is the jar filled now? And he said, well, yeah, it's filled in, it's filled. Then he brought some water. <laughs> is it full now? And then one of the guys said, he said, to, I think to all of us it looks about as full, but maybe you got something else you're going to do here. He said, that's as far as I can figure out too. Yeah, when you're doing, as you start to become a devotee, you're doing, roughly you're doing this, internally you're doing this, and more, yeah. So it becomes not only continuous, but it becomes intense. And you see this with devotees, Krishna. Every moment they've got several things going simultaneously, like that, yeah. So continuous, intense, and one more, broad. Not that you have your island of, island of Hare Krishna life, but the whole world becomes connected to Krishna and you can see how it's in. And where are you then? Where are you at that point? You're in Brandava. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Prison guard is not in the same, same place as a prisoner. You know, he's, he's, he's living in the natural world. Yeah. 
So at that point, we're, there is no more. There is no more material world at that point. You're with Krishna. Everything is happening. So this is also mentioned here in text number eight. Yeah. So this is how to become continuously involved. You know, you follow the process and you become purified enough. Then just naturally. You start following samacharya, raganuga bhakti starts following naturally, and that stimulates your, your, your nature, you know? And once that starts to be stimulated, then it just, your real nature starts to wake up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, trying, you're trying to be compassionate when you go on sankirtan, you know you should do it, other reasons, okay. Then you start to follow, how does Lord Nityananda do sankirtan? You're out there. And at some point, it's like at some point, then it actually kicks in. We do, now we're doing the starter motor. Turn the turn the engine over. Or okay. So that wasn't the starter motor anymore. That was the real motor. So raganuga bhakti, sadhana bhakti is just practicing, trying, doing it. But at some point, you, you experience real compassion for the pe people that you're out there. And then when you're approaching them to sell books, they, they can feel it. <laughs> this guy really, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is, you know, bhava bhakti, yeah. And he's describing all these stages. And he gives names for each of the stages of smaranam, which you can match up. So we have a very sophisticated process of meditation. So by unceasing, uninterrupted, intense, broad smaranam, remembering Krishna's name, pastimes, activities. We come to the level of bhava, and at that time we can clearly see our relationship, eternal relationship with Krishna, and it matures into prema. And that is the essence of all advice. So, koi prashna, huh? He knows this question. He was on the Braj Mandal Parikrama. Koi prashna, eh? <laughs> Any questions? Comments? It's clear? Okay. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, so he's asking if our Tava Pache Pache, he's, he, he's asking if the Tava Pache Pache is focused on any part, Kanishna, Majamuta, and the answer is yes. It's, it's fo focused on people who are uh, studying for Bhakti by Baba certificates, you know, which would be Sannyas, Goswami, like that. So it's, it's basically m middle second initiation. <laughs> yeah. People have taken second initiation and maybe for you know, four years they've been Second initiation after about four years. And you're studying Bhakti by Baba, yeah. That's where it's focused, yeah, yeah. I mean, if somebody's coming in for the first time, they don't know what Majjama, I'm missing all this Sanskrit, they haven't the slightest idea what we're talking about, Majjama, Adhikari, all these things. And so I, I would talk in more general terms. But the audience here tonight, I, okay, I'm seeing, yeah, you know, you know these terms, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's good, it's nice, but it's, you know, focused on that level. Yes, and even we have the test questions, the test questions for the Bhakti Shastri and the Bhakti Bhai Baba level are in here. So you can see if you know these things and stuff. Yeah. And again, it's not material knowledge. This, this, is not, this is knowledge, but it's knowledge which connects up to important things. Yeah. So. Okay. Ahora en el cuarto tenemos dos peruanos. ¿Conoce? Sí. There are two, two people from Peru here now. <laughs> when, when, when two Peruvians meet each other, they need no, need no introduction. <laughs> so, okay. So thank you all very much. This is our, our fourth, presenta fourth and final presentation, introducing the book. And we hope it's useful. And we hope everybody takes it up as their book and we can pub publish more editions with more refined information like that in it. So, Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Okay. So, Paupad Ki Jai. Yeah. Wow. Maestro. Okay. Can you turn off the light? <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah. Those aren't very really big.
So those are those are not very big.